Hello fellow board gamers, my name is Marcel, you know me as your lord of the board games and today I am very proud because I want to introduce a very special guest. Hello, Jason St. Just. Hello Marcel, hello everybody, thanks for watching, I'm Jason. Yeah, Jason, it's so cool to have you here because we both met at Essen Fair this year. Yes. And we met at the booth of Uwe, Uwe Valentin from Sound of Drums. And um, yeah, we will talk about you and your current project. But let's start with yourself. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself to the public? Who are you? And is there anything and any project we might know from you and your Vita? Okay, well, um, first of all, um, Jason St. Just, my name Jason is... is, is It's an English-speaking name because I was born in Canada from a Belgian father and a German mother. Oh. Yes. Uh, my mother was from Seele, Hanover. So uh, I know a little bit of German, but not enough to explain myself so well. <laughs> so that's why I'll keep it in English. Um, and for the first 20 years of my life, I, uh, I moved around uh, Europe and also in, in Canada also. Um, so I moved 11 times and I went to five schools in the first 20 years of my life. So it was a pretty adventurous uh, early life, I must say. Uh, and in the 80s, I also moved to Paris. So that's where also my life, uh, my, my love for the French Revolution and for Napoleon came. I even got lost in the Père Lachaise Cemetery uh -huh. <laughs> as 12 year old. So that was pretty cool. Well, well not at the time, but... My father wasn't so glad about it. Um, and then I did high school in Canada. So I went back to Canada. And uh, when I came back to Belgium, I studied history and English literature. Wow. So, and, uh, but I didn't really teach that much. I went into the logistics. So with the, the planning the trucks and everything like that all through Europe. So that's in short, my, my, my early life. Uh, how would you know me? Um, maybe I started rolling into the board gaming world in 2015 with uh, Epic Battles Waterloo. You might know that as a Stratego Waterloo. So that's where it, where it all started, actually. Um, but I've been passionate about history all through my life. So there you go. And I made another few games uh, on the side, smaller projects and everything like that. And yeah, and now I'm, I have a bigger project. As you well know. Yeah. So, yeah, we will definitely talk about that now. But um, I think we share the same passion with history because I am a sucker for history, especially European history, of course, the French Revolution. I uh, was so lucky that when I was at school, I was at Oppenheim, a German school in um, Rheinland-Pfalz. I had very, very great teachers that knew how to get us excited. And in the end, um, I did my German Abitur, my exams at school, um, in Weimarer Republic. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the first German Republic that ended so uh, sadly in the Third Reich. You know that? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah of um, course. Every date I can find and every documentation, if it's Terra X or Phoenix in Germany, there are great, great historians in Germany. And I am... Uh, I'm soaking up everything I can get there. And when I met Uwe um, yeah. one and a half year ago and he was talking about his projects, his upcoming projects, I was so fascinated. Um, yeah, and Uwe, this is Sound of Drums, of course, Uwe Valentin, uh, which I had an interview a few months ago. And um, yeah, Sound of Drums, this is the, um, the publisher you are working now. How did you came up to meet Uwe before we talk about your project, which we see in the background? Well, I've been, I've been, I've been designing games for the last, uh, since 1996, actually. So I have a, a, a nice portfolio of prototypes. Mm -hmm. um, and my games are, because they're historically and they're, how should I say, Uh, not very euroy, I should say, not very um, mathematical. Um, I had problems finding um, publishers, and so I was thinking. And, and, and uh, a few years ago, I was thinking, well, what am I going to do with all those games? So I decided to 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 um, 
contact the smaller publishers that have a little bit of daring. They have some, they like to think out of the box. They like to be a little bit different. And that's how I met, I think in 2021, I met Uwe from Sound of Drums. And it was, it was, uh, how should I say? It was, it was a perfect match, I must say. Um, he's very communicative. That's what I very, I, I very much like about him. People that talk and communicate about everything. He's fiery. He's passionate. Um, now I also see with the with the Game Found campaign, he likes to think out of the box, which I really loved. I love to think out of the box, being being a little bit different. Uh, and he places quality high on his list, as you well know. Yeah, definitely. Quality is 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 everything for him. And of course, like all, uh, both of us, he's a lover of history. So, yeah. well, there you go. And then you have the perfect match. So, so I was very glad to to have met him. And he came over here, and we went to Waterloo even oh. uh, for a visit. So uh, that was that was great. It was very very nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can I can uh, tell you it was definitely the same when I met him, when we talked, when we wrote and what you are saying about communication, we are sending voice messages. Um, yeah. Nearly every evening we are just talking about how we like games, historical games. Um, uh, the, the past weeks I keep playing his Ancient Seas, Hellas and Dies Irae and so on. And it's, uh, yeah, of course, quality is very, very important for him. If you compare the games he publishes with other publishers in the, let's, let's say, historic or war game sector, they are of a minor quality from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's true. It's uh, it's, it's perfectly true, 100%. Um, other uh, other games, yeah, yeah. The, the quality is, is just top notch. Yeah. So it's... to me, to me, as I am a, I'm coming from the board game sector. Yeah, uh, playing dungeon crawlers as well. The table presents. So what is on the table is important to me. It's not all the mechanical system. It's also the table presents. And if you have nice wooden meeple. Um, it's it's an event for me. So it's, it's, yeah, I, I like to go into into the history as much as possible, and it helps if you have great quality uh, arts and great quality components and yeah. great quality boards. It's it's all yeah. So in the background, uh, everybody sees 1793 Patriots and Traitors, and this is the current Game Found project you were talking about. And as we met at Essen. You were introducing me um, for a few rounds and I was really fascinated, especially on the theme, but also, of course, on the mechanics. You said you were living in Paris, so this might be an answer to my question, but tell us more. How did you came up with the idea? What was your inspiration to uh, um, develop such a game as 1793 is? Well, um... I wrote for um, an American website and I made games for him, uh, Armchair General back in 2007 to 2014. And one of the games I made from the forums in 2011 was a shadow of the guillotine. Yeah. And it was very basic, but I was able to, to make a kind of game in the French revolution, just the same as with 1793 different parties. And they could co communicate with each other via mail, via the forum, actually, ah. and with worksheets, which I would send to them. Um, and that's where the idea came from. It was, it was a pretty good success. Um, of course, I'm the, I'm the designer, I can, but I received the, the, everybody enjoyed the games that I made on um, Armchair General. And then at that moment, I thought, well, couldn't I make a board game of the French Revolution also? And since I, I love the French Revolution and the Napoleonics, it was it was a perfect match. But it was made in 2014, so it took me a while to. Now we're almost 10 years further. So, but if you don't give up, you'll get there. So you have to keep on. Um, so that's where my inspiration came from. So I started with a, a forum game. So, yeah, and of course my love for Paris and then the French Revolution and so. Yeah, we will definitely talk about the game and the mechanics in, in detail in a few minutes. But as you as you said it now, um, Shadows of the Guillotine, 
Um, I hope a lot of viewers, otherwise I will definitely link the update from the current GameFound campaign. I was really searching for that and I was looking in a lot of forums, but I did not find the prototype um, copy of that because I, I would like to try that. I was searching and searching, but it was really hard to find the shadows of the guillotine thing yeah, in this yeah. armchair. It's, it's Armchair General Forum. It closed in 2015, I think, 2014. Okay. That's 2014. And that's why everything was erased. But there was also SPQR, which was uh, 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 the set during the Roman times. And you were trying to, you had the Republicans and you had the ones that wanted to grab the power, actually. And it was kind of a, a, a fight between them. That was another game. And it, it played with 30 people, something like that. 30? Uh, 30 yeah oh, <laughs> so that was over nine months uh so it was it was crazy um but you can't find that one either so it's all been erased hmm. unfortunately but i would say contact my people at armchair general forums on hmm. facebook because there's also a facebook page and they will tell everything about it so okay okay so, yeah no. okay but of course most of the viewers and definitely me are interested in 1793, the board game, which we find yeah. in the GameFound campaign. And of course, I will link the, um, I will put the link in the video description. Um, I know a bit of it, but most of them don't. So tell us about the game. What is special about the game? Um, what are the factions of the game? That is, these are a lot of questions now. Probably we'll start one by one. But um, yeah. what? What is the special mechanics? It's a card-driven game where you have always the to make decisions how you use the cards. That reminded me a bit um, of um, Twilight Struggle, where you also have the uh, opportunity to play the card for a value or for the um, for the description. And these are all questions. And um, how does it scale with the amount of players? And all oh, questions over questions. Try to introduce us a bit in the game. Let us delve deeper in 1793. Okay, well, I'm not so. F I never played uh, Twilight Struggle, so I don't know how to compare with uh, Twilight Struggle. It's a different game. Definitely. Is it, is it, yeah. Um, Twilight Struggle is I, a strategic. I've heard of Twilight Struggle, but I don't know how it yeah. play. I never played it. So. Yeah, it's it's a card-driven game. Yeah. This is the similarity. It's a strategic game, but it's a two-player game, just two players, and you play cards during your turn, and you can always play the card for the value, influence value, um, like in games of Sparta, for example, or you can play um, the text. Yeah. So this is a far similarity, but of okay. course, this is just one aspect of the game. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess it will it will kind of remind uh, people about because I know a, a French um, YouTube channel also said that that it reminded them of, of Twilight Struggle, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but that's uh, not bad. It's a very famous game. Okay, okay. Well, I hope I can live up to the expectations. Um, so, what is special about 1793? Um, well, first of all, you're all the different uh, political factions. Of then, I don't know if you you can't say political groups, but factions because they're all revolutionaries and they but they all have a different objective, another idea of how um, the new republic should be ruled. Um, and they're all struggling um, to gain their objective, um, but they also have to work together to prevent um, the 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 allies. Allied armies, uh, Austria and Prussia, from um, entering France and destroying the revolution. Uh, of course, in a five-player game, which is very fun, is you have the royalists, and they're going to try to do their best to make sure it, it fails so that they win. But of course, some people, when things go bad, some people will want to try to um, work together with the royalists, even if it's only temporary, because um, the royalists have different powers than, uh, for instance, the, the, the Cordelier or the Sans-Culotte have, of course, not that they're specific, specifically going to work together, but it's possible in the game. Everything is possible in the game. It's, it gives a freedom, and that's what I like about it. Um, what makes it special is the, the I like people, I'm a warm game designer, which means that I, wanna, I want people to feel history. 
I just don't want to make it uh, math or logical, mathematics or logical. I, they need to feel it, feel the history, what went on. Um, so I want people to, to maybe be irritated. I want them to maybe to cry <laughs> as they play the game. Um, but I want them to make to, to feel the French Revolution. So the internal pressure, for example, the sans culotte in the streets, um, the external pressure, as I already said about the armies coming in. Um, what else? The political infighting. Not everybody's going to agree with all the laws that come out, but maybe some laws will help them in the end because one law can be um, proposed and can be decreed. Um, and it might help them once they get into power, of course, then they can make use of it. So, for example, sending people to the guillotine, maybe you don't want to do that. But if some parties or political factions gets too strong and you grab, grab the power, that might, that might be an ideal way to gain the upper hand, you know? So are you going to vote on that law or are you not going to vote on the law? That's the question which you must ask throughout the game. So the first important thing we need to, uh, um, to focus on, it's an asymmetric game as you have different factions and they play a bit different and they definitely want to uh, achieve different goals. That's, that's important yeah. to know. And yeah. what you then said, which will be very, very cool for me, um, It is or it has some kind of semi cooperative aspect as you can also lose all together if the Prussian army and the uh, Austrian army invades France. That's very important to know. Yeah. And there is, um, please, all of you have a look at the campaign. There is a second map on your table where you uh, um, can see the armies moving and you as a group who don't like each other because you have different goals you will have to send generals to, uh, yeah, that's the map, to prevent the armies from moving, correct? That's correct. So you can uh, send out armies, uh, your revolutionary generals, to stop them. So it's not as if they're, they're, um, you can't defend France. You can defend France um, by activating generals. But the problem is your generals, when they gain victories on the field of battle, they're going to gain more influence in Paris also. Mm -hmm. So the problem is um, you're going to be saving France, of course, but those generals are going to get stronger and stronger. Then you're with a problem, of course. How are you going to make sure that those generals don't get too strong and too much influence? So then you have a problem. So what are you going to do at that moment? Um, you can let them conquer because when they conquer outside of France, they'll uh, get money for in the treasury. And then if you have the power in the treasury, you can stop the mob, for instance, from attacking you. But then you're still with the problem with the generals. What are you going to do? Because if the generals get into Paris and you decide to do a coup d'etat, then, then, yeah. So it's, it's going to be difficult. Can you stop the generals? Of course, you can assassinate them. You can arrest them, of course, which will take them out of the game. Um, you can even, if you have a military offensive card, You can also make them lose, of course. So you can take influence out of the army, out of the barracks, for instance, so that they get weaker. And then when they lose, then they're going to lose influence, of course. So, so this is definitely the traitor um, in the title. Yeah, you, you have to betray probably your own forces. Uh, yes. Thematically wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you can also, you're also able to... to You have to prevent that somebody gets too strong, of course. <laughs> yeah. But then, of course, when you, if you stop somebody from getting too strong and you're going to be strong, what's going to happen? Other people are not going to like you either because you're becoming too strong. So timing is very important. So when are you going to stop the general? When are you going to, when are you going to start a coup d'etat? You better not do that in the first half because then the chances are great you will not make it. Hmm. But if you try to do it in the second half, then you'll have more chances to grab the power and keep it yeah so and also i like the option if you play with five players that one of him is the royalist who wants to play against everyone else some kind of one versus many mode yeah yeah it's a it's a very fun um it's one that i personally like also to to fight against all of them it's it's an, it's, Me it's too. enjoyable to destroy everything <laughs> it's a uh, yeah 
Okay, and how does that all work now? So we said it is a card-driven game, and if you <laughs> play a card, you have different options. And um, of course, you want to change the rules. You said, how will that all work? There are certain spaces on the um, play mat, on the on the battle board, and yeah, how does that work? How do we use the cards? So, uh, uh, indeed, an, uh, a special aspect of the game, which is, I think, you're you're more into board games than I am, but you can change the game rules and you can change the board. I don't know if that's something special or un unique. I think it is special. Yeah? Okay. Um, so, you have the option out of uh, 21 laws, because as you can see on the Game Found campaign, it's going very well, so there's new laws coming all the time. So, <laughs> uh, so we're going to have a total of 21 laws. Um, and they will all, all be able to change the rules and also change the board, uh, which means um, that not every game is going to be the same. So when you when you have the majority in the in the national convention in the convention nationale, because we're going to be every, everything's going to have its own French name, of course. Um, when you have a majority there, you can propose a law, and everybody in the national convention will be able to vote. So one vote. Uh, of course, when a new law is published, such as uh, universal suffrage, then more people will be able, depending on how many uh, influence you have in the national convention, you'll be able to um, place more votes. Ah, I understand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But in the beginning, it's only everybody gets one vote. And if the law passes, then this has consequences. For instance, um, if you do living en masse, this will make your army long, uh, longer, so there's the, um, it will make it stronger because you'll be able to place more cubes on the board. And of course, an army will only fight well if it's united. Mm -hmm. So if it's the green general and there's a lot of green cubes, then they will become stronger, of course. But if you have a whole bunch of red ones and blue uh, influence and yellow influence, then your armies will be um, weaker. Mm -hmm. because you have different opinions in the army. Um, but uh, when you do that, when you vote for uh, the Levy en masse, you'll have a new board, a new tile on the board, but the people in provinces will not be happy about it because they're going to be called on to fight in the armies and they're going to rise and revolt. So it always has consequences. And that's, for instance, how you're going to change the rules. Because, of course, if you're in a five-player game, the royalists will be, yay! Uh, there's <laughs> revolts in, uh, in the Vendée and in Loire and everything like that. So that's something that the players will also have to um, keep in mind. Every time you propose a law and it passes, it also has consequences. Hmm. So, so I, I, yeah. I really think that this is a special mechanic. I do know definitely board games that evolve, um, probably le legacy games where you pl play more than one uh, scenario over a course of a campaign, the rules do evolve. And of course there are engine building games where you uh, generate certain options, but the way you designed your game, that you have different laws, that people um, vote, probably there is a table talk in front and negotiation. And then they vote, I think, as a, to me, and I played over a thousand board games, um, that is definitely special and I'm really, really excited. And what is definitely really important, I think, to know is that the different factions, as they have different goals, they don't want to have every law changed, correct? Of course, there's some that, that don't want it. Like, for instance, the, the, the Feuillant, um, the, the, the yellow ones, they are the more conservative. And of course, the more laws that change, um, at the beginning of the game, they, they are, the rules don't change and those are the way the rules are. And that's the way the yellow want to keep it because in the beginning, there's no, nobody is sending anybody to the guillotine. And that's what the yellow don't want because then they can keep the power, of course. So not everybody's going to want to send people to the guillotine or to the conciergerie. You're not going to want to, in order to do a coup d'etat, for instance, um, you're going to need the military because you need the military, the cannons to attack um, the, 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 the government. But you also have the people. And if you have laws that make 
uh, for instance, the, 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 the military stronger, of course, what's going to happen is when you do a coup d'etat, the, the, the military is going to have more chance to attack the government. So you're not going to want that either. Mm-hmm. So everything has its consequences. But in the game, it's kind of like a puzzle. It's a two hour puzzle of how everything can be used in your um, advantage. So with every law, you're going to have to try to find out what is your advantage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you also have leaders, of course, important yeah, leaders. I wanted to ask about them. Yeah. How do they work? So you can say, for example, if you have um, Jean-Paul Marat, he is known in the past for um, getting the people behind him, the Paris streets, uh, the faubourgs. And they also have um, a lot of power um, once there's a coup d'etat. So if the red person, uh, the the cordelier, the ultra radicals, if they are able to um, activate Jean Paul Marat, because every leader has its own, how should I say, its own symbol. So, for example, um, the cordelier, they have a a, a Fergin Fergin uh, Fergin hat. I don't know how you say that, but it's a it's a red hat, yeah. kind of like the Smurfs, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> a red, red Smurf, yeah. Um, but that if if you're the red and you find a leader with that symbol on it, then you can activate it, and it will give you certain benefits every round. For example, Jean Paul Marat, if you have him every round, he can take uh, influence from his pile and he can put it on the Paris streets, which makes the Paris streets red. Or and if you start a uh, coup d'état. Then, of course, the, the red can team up with, for instance, the general in Paris and they can overthrow the government. That's great. So those are, of course, do you want that? Um, if the, the blue and the red come into power, of course, that's going to be one of the um, laws they will try to uh, propose and decree because that will make them stronger, of course. And the yellow ones don't want that and the red ones, well, they'll probably don't want that either. So. so a definitely highly interactive game from what I think. Um, uh, it, it sounds to me as it's very important to get your leaders early into the game. But I think there is also a disadvantage uh, as I can lose my leaders as well. You can lose, lose your leaders by way of an assassination. You can um, get them arrested with an arrest card, for instance, then they go back into your hand. Ah. Um, but the problem is they won't be discarded from the game altogether, but your next round, if you want to keep them, you're going to have to spend one action again to activate it, which is irritating because you probably want to do something else with that action, of course. Mm. Um, what else can you do? Of course, if you suffer from a coup d'etat, they're going to end up under the guillotine and you will lose them also. So every uh, faction has their own leaders. And they all have their own specific benefits. For instance, the yellow ones, they um, their objective is to save uh, Louis the Sixteenth, who uh-huh. is in the Temple Prison. Um, now, if they manage to activate Antoine Barnave, um, he will be able to place a yellow cube, yellow influence on the Temple Prison every time. So, once it's activated, the other players are going to say, "Oh." Watch out because the yellow has Antoine Bernard. We're going to have to keep an eye on him. So constantly the, the attention will change. You have to, you have to look at the, the royalists. You're going to have to look at the armies invading. You're going to have to watch out that the red player doesn't send too many people to the guillotine because then he will win. You have to watch out that the yellow ones don't get too strong. And at the same time, you have the green and the blue, and they're kind of in between. Mm-hmm. But they're not partners because the green one is safe kind of save the king and the blue ones want to send them to the guillotine so but i think that is really a, another special and cool thing about the game from what i think because if you cannot focus on one aspect but you uh, have to keep all the board and the actions of your uh, players in mind then it never gets boring This is... It certainly doesn't. It some, certainly doesn't get boring. Um, what I usually say for a laugh is when I when I play test when I get into game clubs, I usually say I'm going to give you guys a whole bunch of chaos now. Ah, cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so so everything evolving all the time. Two more questions now. Yeah. Um, 
Is there, from your perspective, some kind of sweet spot, um, except the five-player version, what I would adore most, is there a sweet spot? How long does the game run? Is there a counter, the cards, for example? And um, is there probably a downtime problem? Do I have to wait or am I always acting? Um, it, it depends a lot. The, the questions you're asking is a lot about, about the people sitting around the table. Yeah. I'm one who likes to, um, likes to um, discuss a lot. Um, you're you obviously going to have, have people having that, that don't like that. Um, does that mean that you can't play the game? No, of course not. Um, is there downtime? I usually say that the game takes about two hours to play, which is actually very short for such a game. Um, if we're playing together, we're going to be discussing a lot. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it will run out to two, two and a half hours, three hours max. Yeah. Um, but it all depends from the people around the table. I know there are some people that don't like to discuss that much, but you can, you have to, you can keep it short and you can make it very long. It's, it's up to the players. Actually, the entire game is dependent on the players around the table. Uh -huh. um, because in normal games, you have, uh, you start somewhere and you know which way you have to go to, to gain your objective. Here, you don't know. You start somewhere, I'm just going to throw you into the French Revolution. And the way the players are playing is the way you're going to have to react to it. That's great. So, so you're never going to... It's For some people, it's frightening because usually they want a straight, straight line where to go. But this is... You don't know. It depends on the people around the table. Say, for instance, you become too powerful. I'm going to play against you. But for the same money, I might end up, I might fail and I might end up on the guillotine also. And so people are going to, oh, poor Jason, he lost. This guy's ended up on the guillotine. What am I going to do? I'm going to work together with somebody else, maybe with the royalists. Mm. Royalists, um, I'm going to, I'm going to vote against something which you don't like, but you're going to have to do something for me in return, you know? So changing coalitions, that sounds very great to me. And as you said, talking, table talk, I indeed tend to act in these kind of games. I don't know if you know Churchill, the game. There, When I play the cards with the um, personalities, I change my voice and I try to speak as if I'm Winston, Sir Winston Churchill, <laughs> something like that. Yeah? Great. It's yeah. great. And yeah. uh, well, I, think, I think people that will play the game with me need to accept that I will take over because um, in the very beginning, I come from RPGs and yeah. I quit it game playing RPGs because it's so time cons consuming. Uh, but if I have the chance and I always say theme is king, And as I told you in the beginning, um, European history, I'm a teacher, I'm a politician's teacher. And yeah, okay. of course, the French Revolution is one of the most important um, events in the European history. Yeah, for yeah. Um, let's I say in, in Germany, we have the Constitution with Article 2, um, the right of freedom. Yeah, we would never have it if the French Revolution had another ending. So yeah. I think this is the opportunity to act more than just talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I surely hope that people will enjoy acting. That it's not a prerequisite, but I would love to play against you and then have a discussion with you and and say so, no, I'm not going to do that. And then on the side, I'm going to help yeah. your enemy because um, your enemy is my. How do you say that? Um, uh, your enemy is my friend. Yeah, I, I understand. understand. Yeah. The, um, the my my enemies my enemy's foe is my friend yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there you go That's, yeah I, uh, i definitely I, in my brain there are pictures of people i know who are perfect for the game um yeah. uh, players I, i played games like game of thrones these traitor yeah. games where you have an alliance and a few minutes later you say oh i'm sorry but there is a better arrangement for me this time yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that, and, The, the, the thing is, and that's what I say when people play the game, um, don't become too powerful too early. Mm. It doesn't mean you're going to lose the game, but it's just it's something which I would, I would suggest. Try to keep it, uh, keep yourself low profile. Yeah. Because um, I remember historically, Abbe de Sayez was during the French Revolution, and he was the only politician. He was there from the beginning, 
And people were surprised that he was still in France and he was still in Paris. And when they asked him in 1795, um, uh, what did you do, do during the French Revolution? He answered, I survived. Mm -hmm. So you get the low profile. <laughs> and that's what makes it real also. Because you, if you keep a low profile, if you don't get too much attention, you won't end up under the guillotine. Yeah, that, that's a good answer. Um, <laughs> from my experience... Um, mm -hmm. As I'm usually uh, playing these competitive games where uh, everybody is playing against everyone, it's always a good idea to be not the one in the lead, but to come up very, very late on the second or third spot and then to do a, a kind of sprint. Yeah? Yeah. So 10 minutes before the game ends, then you have to be prepared and, and uh, full start. And yeah, then you have to empty your magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the problem is everybody's going to do that. <laughs> so. And then who's going to start first? So timing is very important in the game also. Yeah. It's just like with a real, real revolution, the timing is important. Yeah. So. <laughs> That so. sounds sounds definitely so interesting. I, from what I think now, this is definitely a game I need to uh, to play. And yeah, do you already know when you uh, will be able to deliver? Probably yeah. Uwe talks to you about that. Um, the the game should be uh, delivered in, in in February. Wow, uh, beginning March. So wow. I'm, I I I think there's written on the game found yeah. campaign uh, end of February. Let's say end of February, beginning March would be nice. So um, we're working hard now to get all the all the the files done. Um, yeah, get everything ready so that when the campaign ends, all we have to do is send it out, get it done, get the production done, and send it out because that's very important. We don't want mm. people to wait for a year because that's it that's seems sad. like it seems like most. In, in very many games, that's that's the case that they have to wait sometimes a, a year or something like that. We don't want to go that way. And Uwe is also aware of that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, people forget about the game and they are not um, they are no more excited for the game. And I think mm -hmm. now it's it's then the campaign ends in 14 days. So it's, I think, end of December. And so we have to wait approximately eight weeks. And then we can play the game. And yeah. I will definitely uh, be one of the first to uh, inspect the game and uh, show all the materials. And I talked to so many people who are uh, excited and want to play the game. In, again, the question, is there a sweet spot? Do I have to play with four people when I don't have five? Or can I also play with three? You can also play with three. Yeah. That's no problem. Um, then... Um, there's also a solo and a two-player variant, the Lonely Revolutionary variant. Oh, cool. Um, so you can play with one on your own. You can play with two. Then you're just going to have to play with, um, how should I say, it's real. It's a completely different mechanic because simply when I design games, I like to put as much in the package as possible. So when you play with the uh, Lonely Revolutionary variant, um, then... I know there's a lot of people that don't like to play um, different factions at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, say, for example, you're the blue and you have to also play with the red. Um, I change that because you can influence the faction sheets are also going to be um, an area to influence. So, for example, if I get on the blue player and I get all my cubes on the red player, I'll be able to play with both. But of course, yellow is not my opposite one. Uh, the when I play with the two-player one, uh, he's not going to like that. So he's going to take cubes away from the red one, so that I don't, I can't play with them. Understand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a different game, even with different numbers of players. Um, so um, to to come to an end, um, as yeah. you said, you will be able to deliver in approximately uh, two and a half months. Do you then you are finished with that project? People will enjoy your game. Um, do you have any uh, future plans you can and want talk about now? I would love, and uh, and Uwe knows that also. I would love to get eighteen twelve the retreat done. Oh, so that's the the retreat out of Russia. Wow. So Napoleon's troops returning back, and they have to survive. Um, it's a game also where. All my games are cutthroat a little bit. Yeah, awesome. So, I love that. So you, you start with seven troops. And 
every turn something happens and you're going to have to, you can steal from other people the food, from other players, from other companies actually. Yeah. But it can get cold and if you don't have clothing, they're going to freeze. If you don't have, you can easily slaughter your horse. You can either get yourself a horse, which you can slaughter for your for your troops. You can go um, uh, discover it in Russia. Um, but you have to be careful, of course, because the Russians are there. So you, you can play mini battles, very easy mini battles. Uh, and it can be that you end the game with only one troop or two troops. So, and that's going to be, uh, so it's not, um, how should I say, a big campaign with a lot of, lot of troops. You just have a small company of survivors that just left Moscow and you have to get all the way back to Poland, the Polish border. And, and again, it's a um, thematically driven game and it's yes. nearly in the same epoch. And I'm so happy that you focus on that epoch because this is one of my favorite historical epochs where I... I always wanted to, uh, how shall I, how shall I say? I wanted to live. I want to experience yeah. what I read about, and yeah. there are. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do with my games. Yeah, that's so great because there are so few games that are touching these subjects, and I'm so happy that I get to know all of you, Uwe, and of course you, and be be able to play your game soon so yeah you, thank you, you from a gamer's go, perspective now you want to go into the past so here's here's a chance yeah so great yeah. okay jason um, yes it was a pleasure to talk to you again thank, thank you, you so much likewise so uh, i love the, the 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 passion which we have i mean which we show here on the on the youtube channel so uh, thank, thank you. you for contacting me Yeah, thank you too. And as as I heard it, you are already satisfied with the campaign as a lot of stretch goals or all of them are unlocked, you told? Uh, they've been unlocked now, but we have another one. Uh -huh. uh, so who asked me, can we do something else? I say, oh, I think I got an idea. There's something I still have in reserve, but I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> I would... <laughs> I will definitely keep my fingers crossed, but I'm pretty sure that you will reach your goals. So thank you again that you took your time. It's it's late. It's late in the evening. It's 11 p.m. and you took your time. Thank you so much. I want to thank everybody also for I can do that now for, yep. for also supporting us and uh, for for the campaign. Let's bring history back to life. These are the best words to end an interview. <laughs> thank See you very much. and thank you all for watching. Uh, I will put a link in the video description for the GameFound campaign. So visit them, Jason and uh, Sound of Drums, to uh, be able to participate in this great project. Bye and see you the bye. next time. Take care.